the summer has ended. So let's review Lego Island. Lego Island was pretty good. It was, as I recall, uh, one of the Lego's first open world game with things to interact with and people to interact with. For the first game, they made that pretty good by making you feel like you were smoking too many you know what. And then they made a sequel. <coughs> and then, then they made a prequel. I liked it. But I never played any of these games. I did so, it's about, and I think it might be one of my most favorite LEGO Island games. Because this one got a line of sets to go along with the game. Somehow they never did that for the first two games. You only got a polybag and a minifigure of Brickster, the main villain of the theme, or at least I remember him showing up with some packages of the garden too, but I am I am not sure. Alright, crappy intro out of the way, let's talk about the set itself. And even though it isn't much, it is one of the better sets in my opinion. It has that video gamey aesthetic of blocky shapes with small bits of detail that makes this a fun little set to display. Huge it may not be, but I think it's pulled off pretty well for 2002, the year I was born, which is the only fun fact you will ever know about me. Anyway, the set itself comes with two minifigures, and because it's a LEGO review, you know what that means. Scooter! Yeah, screw the same single part every remix, I am a rebel, motherfucker! Apology when I was wearing, please don't unsub. <clears throat> anyway, this is Pepper's jet ski, or rather the extreme stunts jet ski. This is actually a vehicle used for making tricks during the water levels of Lego Island 3. And since Pepper is the main character of every single title, of course, he's the one driving the scooter. Because the best way to make tricks is if a child was doing them. Oh, Lego was nuts, I tell you that. The board itself also has some interesting patterns throughout the build, all 14 pieces. The some parts didn't even exist at that time, so that's why the bottom uses two long inverted slopes instead of a single big one you see today. However, lack of parts aside, look at all those patterns. My crown might be crappy at picking up tiny details, but damn, that's some sweet gradient effects. Because these aren't actually your regular old gradients, they are actually tiny dots that change size in one direction, giving you an illusion of a gradient. That effect is called half tone, and I really dig this effect on Lego parts. It makes the design that more interesting in comparison to modern stuff that always very flat and focused more on adding a ton of pointless color detail, which I understand why it's done, but I still appreciate stuff like this because boy do I love me some tiny detail like this. Also, these two slopes are actually exclusive to the set, while the front piece which also has the Extreme Stance crew longer at the front, also shows up in other sets but on a red brick instead of orange. Just a small fun fact because I am a YouTuber and that means I am smart! By the way, how did you go on that exam you had? Let me know in the comments. I felt mildly. But, but, but anyway, minifigures? Not yet. FISH! Lego sure likes to add shards to some of their water film sets for some reason. While this one isn't exactly special like this uh, white one, watch the video please. Um, it's pretty good, despite its age. It's still a better shark than this angry looking one Lego loves to make these days. Uh, I, I do not understand why sharks need to look angry. There are some that don't have those eyes and, and they look adorable. But Lego is run by some old people who think that deep stories are best made by 4 kids. What does that have to do with a fucking shark? Oh wait, never mind. You can open a shark's mouth. Possibly to put something in there, but nothing that I have here is small enough to fit. Okay, now we discuss the main build, which is built on top of this deliciously attractive piece we call a base plate. It's a piece Lego liked to make back in the day, but slowly was reduced to only exist as an extra prosthetic to these giant houses I bet none of you will ever afford. This one also comes with this old color called light yellow. It's a color that was replaced by bright light yellow a couple years later, and as you can see, it shows up through the entire build, including on this exclusive 4x3 slope that I think not only has exclusive to this set printing, but it also the only time this piece was ever even made in that color. Not sure about that though, so let me know in the comments. And it's also just on these cracked bricks. Yeah, that's press get for buying your Lego. 
That's just a fold of old Lego sets being inflated so big that no normal person can ever handle the amount of pressure this amount puts on your wallet. Please stop talking about inflation. Yeah, okay, okay, sorry. Also, these chains are cracked, but whatever. During the build around, you can see the controls. Uh, not sure what they are used for. There is no, no sign of mechanism on this tower. Maybe it's for this megaphone on top of the tower. Either way, it looks pretty bad due to the LEGO slopes not having smooth texture on them. Back in the day, the quality definitely wasn't that good. The print does look pretty good though. Uh, I like the colors used and it does make for an interesting take for a watchtower. But I wish the sides were wider because no way in hell anyone could even fit in there. And on the top you have the standard seat for the lap guard that can spin, that's a neat trick. And the flag and aforementioned megaphone. Cool! And I'm going down the ladder. You see some extra detail like this shark sign that I think it is exclusive to this set as well. A small dock with an interestingly built ramp that uses a sticker that's really only there to show off the Extreme Instance branding spread throughout the entirety of LEGO Island in that game. And this interestingly designed surfboard. It is just two stickers applied to an orange plain board, but I like it because it uses more of the nice texturing on the panels with a logo on the nose of the board, and also these stickers are exposed to paint chipping, which I absolutely hate. Stickers in general aren't that good. They break off over time, and about them, the sets most of the time lose important detail, like my beloved Exoforce Max. So, if you ever want to get any of these sets, just remember, make sure to get the set with stickers in perfect quality and make sure to handle them with proper care, especially since LEGO neglects the old films. I mean seriously, do you guys have a fear boner for Pepper? You did not just call this dude Pizza Boy, like if you're about to get sued for some reason. <sighs> More LEGO show is weird about that. And speaking of Pepper, it's about time we talk about the only thing I care about 99% of LEGO sets. Pepperoni is on the way to be the first to be reviewed. Pepperoni is a child. So why is he so big? Well, you see, the short legs were only for a while only used for Yoda to make him more size accurate to the movies. It would have been weird to see him in regular human height, so that's why Pepperoni is a big boy. Design-wise, this figure is alright, although he's missing his iconic hat, headphones and backpack. They literally made hats with printing on them not long before this theme. What the hell? He also features some leg printing, which was kinda rare back in the day and the legs come with some that neat texture on the knee pads. Not sure if that's supposed to be like rusted look or something, but it is interesting nonetheless. I think also it's the only time LEGO made knee pads that look like this too. The torso uses some of that half tone effect I mentioned before. Hope you didn't fall asleep before that, and if you did... WAKE UP! The pizza on the shirt seems to have an orange outline around it. I'm not sure exactly, on every copy of the store, so it is very hard to tell if there is any outline there. But looking at from an angle, you can notice the shine slightly moving in, in another direction around the pizza, so there is definitely an outline there. Hope my camera picked that up. Face is also pretty neat, very accurate to the in-game design, although the hair on, on mine is more curvy and realistic, as to the old low poly sharp spikes of the one in the game. Overall, not a bad attempt. Although I would prefer if the backpack was included, for some reason some says has him with his bright green neck bracket for the stick to be attached to. Kinda lame, but this was one year before infamous year of 2003, which we all know was when LEGO almost died. So I'd say this isn't a half bad attempt. Definitely worth collecting if you enjoy original LEGO games as much as I do enjoy looking at them. <laughs> oh, 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 oh yeah, the other guy. His name is Snap Locket. I'm pretty sure that's how you say it, and I believe he's not even in the third game. Uh, if I remember correctly, he shows up in the mid pool. Never mind, he actually does show up in this game with questionable attire that's a peanut. and the most perfect hair you've ever seen. And I honestly kind of wish the set came with the glitch Red Lady, as she's in my opinion more memorable of a side character work, but that's just me. He does come with that nice old 2000s flower shirt, which has some very tiny subtle half tone detail with the flowers changing color from orange to yellow and just like every minifigure around that time no back, print, no back printing unfortunately this face is pretty alright though I dig those metallic sunglasses they're pretty radical also he comes 
spirit wear low talk walkie talkie and a pair of binoculars also a quick look at the instructions a very weird cover art for some reason every set is taking place under this bridge for some reason very odd design choice the steps also feature this very aesthetic pleasing backdrop with a city on an island in the background and all the step numbers are slapped on a satellite very 2000s and very nice and at the end you also get a small step by step on how to build the alternate build it's something I wish LEGO did more they even add a second alternate build on the back of the box perfect idea especially when your set has almost no gimmicks also at the end you have this ad for the game that uses early version of the boxer for some reason Pepper doesn't even use the skateboard in the game I guess they were rushing these sets out quickly it will explain the quality of so overall thoughts on the set hmm well the set isn't terrible like at all it's a nice glimpse into the world of lego island to some of the stickers of the extreme stance branding although you will have to probably find a way to get off the printing on the on top of the tower but but overall this set is pretty good i recommend getting it in your local online store on on the site called bricklink that theme is mostly overlooked by everyone since it isn't star wars but hey that's better than paying a ton of money on some half ass build you don't even want but the figure that comes in for some reason is the <sighs> thank you for watching this video Consider subscribing for future content such as reviews and animations. Also follow me on social media such as Twitter, Divinart and Tumblr. Yes, I'm still using Tumblr. Also check me out on Instagram if you like seeing pictures of Lego you don't have money for but I happen to own them. And also thank you so much for 100 subscribers. I am very grateful for this wonderful gift and I hope we will soon reach 200 and maybe even 500 subscribers one day. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you once again in another video. Man, is it me or is this really stinking in here? How about we let some air in? See you next time.